It is a reprieve for hoteliers and eateries in the coast region grappling with the Indian house crow menace as a private sector company allowed by the government to import a chemical to reduce their population. Hospitality industry and food businesses have struggled with the reduced number of guests and losses following invasion by the Indian house crow believed to be over a hundred years old in the country. Initially, the Indian house crow was synonymous in Mombasa County, but over the years has spread to other counties like Taita Taveta, Tana River, Kwale, Lamu, Kilifi, and in some sections of Makueni County and neighboring countries of Tanzania and Djibouti. The Indian house crow is a COVID or in the covers family. It is a crow, but the Indian house crow does not belong to Kenya. It is not indigenous to Kenya. The Indian house crow is indigenous to India. It was brought to Kenya by the Indians who came about a hundred years ago. Mostly it came through Zanzibar. They first landed in Zanzibar and then they came along the coast all the way to Kenya and all the way to Djibouti. In fact, in Djibouti they don't have a single indigenous bird. This uh, Indian house crow cleared all the indigenous birds. And in Tanzania, of course, there are very many. They tried to eradicate them, but they have not been quite successful. So the Tanzanians had said that if we are successful here, we should go and assist them, eradicate theirs. What happens with the Indian house crow? It attacks the indigenous birds. The eggs of the indigenous birds, the young ones of the indigenous birds, and if you go to Mombasa, you'll hardly find uh, indigenous birds. They are very, very, very few. And this being a coastal region, you should expect very, very many species of birds, but you don't find them because the crows do not allow. The crows are getting more than our birds, and they have moved inland. They have reached Mtito and Day. And they have even been decided at um, Savo, which is very dangerous. If they move up to Nairobi, they will be in a lot of problems. It will be very difficult to eradicate them. Areas with garbage are conducive habitation of the birds and are feared to be carrying pathogens that cause serious diseases. The Little Kenya Garden Limited, a private sector company, is implementing a five-year strategy to eradicate the invasive birds believed to have been introduced in Kenya by Indians who were constructing the Kenya-Uganda Railway in the early 1900s. The company is importing a pesticide known as Stalicide from New Zealand to kill the birds as part of cushioning local food businesses against destruction. They have been making a lot of noise for many years. I only came in in 2016 and I have made a big effort, I've made big strides and the hoteliers are still making noise on the sidelines. It's time they made a move. They have seen that actually we have proven that the chemical works. Even I personally, I was a little bit worried. I didn't know whether the, you're told it works, but when we proved it works, it was a big relief. So what I would tell the hoteliers is to come out, contribute towards the eradication of this. If the government says they don't have money to do it, then I think it's up to the stakeholders to contribute. If each hotelier contributed even a thousand shillings per bed, you know, it will go a long way into eradicating these crows. The county governments especially, if they care about their residents, they should come out, put some money aside and contribute towards the eradication of this crow. Because it's very costly for one company to do it on their own. Cecilia Ruto from the Little Kenya Garden Limited lamented that the birds have contributed to rapid reduction of native fowls and attack poultry as well. If they are multiplying period, don't forget these are birds that can live up to 300 years. So they multiply. They are multiplying every year. So if you had a million two years ago, definitely by the following year, they will have multiplied, maybe times two. The year after that, they will have multiplied times another two. So the birds are actually many. Some people say they could be in the hundreds of thousands. I think they are more than maybe between four and five million. But I am not 100% sure, 
how many I had been told that before we had heard that there were about four million a while ago but we don't know how many they are exactly and there is no point of spending money to count the birds let's kill them and as we bury them we count them so that we know we killed so many birds that way we, we hit two birds or many birds with one stone and um, if we don't take care of these crows it's a really 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 big problem especially for the tourists not necessarily just the international even the local tourists local tourism will also be affected because you go to a hotel you cannot enjoy your meal as you would like to you know you're sitting there you're trying to enjoy your meal with your family or with your friends and the crows are there either making noise or taking away your food the bigger problem for me and i think the government should listen very carefully if god forbid we should get an avian related disease like avian flu those bird flus because of the nature of the indian house crow it's a social bird very many people will be wiped, will be wiped out of the coast Coastal residents residing in estates and gated communities face difficulties when they host events like weddings and dowry ceremonies as the birds fly over and snatch food from the participants. Residents who have kept other animals like dogs further face challenges when feeding them as the Indian house crow snatched the food as well. The birds fly in big numbers and at the same time are intelligent enough to notice their enemies. Every serious environmental threat there's got to be a problem, if not directly, indirectly to the hotels and the hospitality trade. Crows are a menace where you have food out in the open, so it must be a problem for the hotel industry. If they have a barbecue or buffet outside, uh, crows will always be there um, as a menace. Wakazi wakilifi wana ni wafugaji sana sana ule upande wa wanafuga kuku kuna kuku kuna mabata na vif, vif, eh, kuku na, maba, na, na bata sasa inafika ni wakati mwingine ya kwamba yule kuku ame, ametaga na uko na vile vifaranga wakati mwingi kunguru akiona kile kifaranga wala wa, waga na anapata amepata kitoweo sasa wakati mwingi kuku upande wa kilifi si sana kukua kwa sababu wakati mwingi vile vifaranga vinaaliwa na kunguru Na hizi kunguru tumegundua kwamba zimekuwa ni wanyama wengine wachafu. Sasa kwa upande wa mahotelini ni kwamba kumekuwa na changamoto. Ya kwamba chakula kama pingine kuna mgeni kwa mfano kuna wale wageni wame, watalii wamekuja wamesaviwa chakula na makazi mengi sasa sana ni yale ya upande mwingi ni kuhusiana na hizo upande wa mifugo ni kwamba zimeharibu sana vifaranga hata tunakuwa si sana kukuta boma limejaa hawa kuku ziko na kelele nyingi sana na pia zinarauka zinarauka sana saa 11 ndio hizo kelele wazimeanza alafu jioni ile waki, wakitua kwa zile miti zao kama wanalala ndio hizo kelele bado zime, huwa zimezidi sana changamoto nyingine yenye tuko nayo na kunguru tukiwa hapa nyumbani sisi ni wafugaji wa, wa mifugo kama kuku. So inakuwa na challenge kuweka wale kuku inabidi tunalinda kuku kama yani tunawalinda, tunawalisha ile kama vile mtu anavyoweza kulisha mbuzi kwa sababu ukiwachilia ukiwachilia kuku peke yao peke yake na akiwa na vifaranga vile vifaranga wa kunguru anadona na yeye anapaa juu ya, ya mti anaenda kutoanisha matumbo na anakula kifaranga cha kunguru. Hiyo ni changamoto nyingine ya pili. Changamoto nyingine ya tatu ni kwamba zikiwa kwa zikiwa kwa maboma zimeharibu mazingira. Kwa sababu huwa hizo zikikula zikishiba zinaachilia sana kinyesi. So kila mahali kuna kuangana whiteish. Hiyo weupe weupe kinyesi ya ya kunguru. Hiyo ni changamoto ya ya tatu changamoto ya nne ni kwamba kulingana na vile idadi ya hizo kunguru tuna yani tuko na 
ile wasiwasi ya kuwa zinaweza kuja kuathiri hata maisha ya ya mwanadamu kwa sababu mtoto akiwa mchanga tuko hapa nyumbani unaweza kama wakati wa joto unaweza chukua mtoto ndani ya nyumba ukaweka matres yako kwa kivuli ukalaza mtoto wako pale ama mkalala na ye pale lakini the moment tu kitoka utapata kunguru zimevamia pale mahali unaona so yule ni mwanadamu na ni mtu mwenye hayezi jitetea kuamka ku so inabidi unakuwa na ye karibu kwa karibu karibu the indian house crow has a way of we don't know whether the local ones do but the indian house crow recognizes can do facial recognition they can they can and they they recognize they recognize your voice and your face and especially your eyes so if you do something wrong to them they will not forget and they will communicate that to the other birds and you'll find that the birds are coming to mob you by mobbing i mean they will be fluttering around you and making a lot of noise